Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to look at a few more responses to the web DRM. These are coming from Brave and Mozilla. So to bring you up to speed, if you missed it last week, we did a video on Google's web DRM proposal where they are trying to lock the web behind API calls, checking to make sure that your browser that you are accessing a website with is authentic. Now, in some of the response, people said, well, this is why I don't use Chrome. The problem is, if this is implemented on a given website, if you're not using Chrome, you won't be able to access that particular website. Now, if this is some niche website, sure. If this is some other website, like, um, you know, just if it's something that, that you have to, you're forced to use, like a government website or something, then now you're, they're going to force you to use a browser that you cannot agree to the terms of service to. Very interesting to say the least. And so uh, to get an overall summary of exactly what's going on and how this works, go ahead and watch this video here uh, from last week. But uh, just the TLDR is that Google wants to, or at least uh, a, an engineer at Google as his pet project that is now starting to see implemented into canary builds of the Chromium build is that the website, if it's utilizing this system, needs to get a access token from an, an attester. The attester is going to look at your behaviors and operating system to make sure that you are a genuine human and that your browser is un, um, uh, un, let's see, untampered with, we'll say. And then it's going to send the token back and then it's going to allow you to access the website. So if you say, well, I'm just not going to use Google Chrome, you just won't be able to access that particular website. And that really is the TLDR of what is going on. But you can uh, see the protocol, how it's going to work. And mostly we covered Vivaldi's response in that first video. But since then, Brave and Firefox have both responded. So turning over to its FOSS from just a couple of days ago, Google's web, uh, new web environment integrity proposal dismissed by Brave, Mozilla, and Vivaldi. In that other video, we did cover the Vivaldi episode, so we're not going to mention that again, uh, except just to say that Vivaldi has some serious concerns about what is going on. Now, uh, as we've already described a little bit about what this is, potential gatekeeping mode. Uh, obviously, people are saying, well, Google's going to be one of these attesters. Vivaldi says Google will be the attester on Chrome or the Chrome browser or if you're using uh, like a Chromebook or something. If you're using Microsoft, no doubt Windows will just absolutely jump in and start saying how good this is and start implementing it. And then they're going to be the attester for Edge. And then Apple will be the attester for that because those three are in cahoots anyway. And then what will end up happening is over here on Linux, we'll have one option. Canonicals snap. Hmm. Um, but uh, that really is where it will probably end up. That is the proposed mechanism by Vivaldi. Again, look at the other video, which I will link below in order to uh, get a little bit more detail about that. So, of course, uh, the attester is the third party capable of giving the final verdict of whether or not your environment is secure. And then the question is, are they going to use more than just the code on the browser? Are they going to look at the behavior as well? You know, sometimes you will we'll get a you'll get a pop up like you need to authenticate yourself again because what you're doing looks suspicious. I get a lot of these because of how security hard my browsers are. I get a lot of times I try and log into something where it wants that extra step because something seems strange here. Yeah, I'm a strange guy. I don't let you have perpetual cookies on my browser. I know that's odd, but that's just kind of me. So um, getting into the bottom of the article here, Firefox and Brave both have in, um, issued some responses. So in the case of Firefox, when a request for position was opened on the GitHub repo, um, Brian Grinstead from Mozilla clarified the and they entirely opposed the API. This is the quote from the article, but here's the actual GitHub page. Uh, you'll see it is closed and request for position web environment integrity API. And so a request for the position emerging web specification. They provide the various links. Of course, this is to an individual Google's. Uh, if you want to read all about it directly from the GitHub repository, 
They are linked in over there. And uh, you can kind of see what the situation is. Chromium's prototype is currently relying on Play Integrity, uh, which is the, uh, I guess, an Android app. I don't know anything about that one. Uh, but the, speci um, the specification is clear that it is a vendor, vendor neutral. However, I have personal concerns that since EME, in theory, is vendor neutral, in practice, there would only be three vendors, which are entirely recognized. Google, Wildvine, which is used by Firefox, uh, plus Chrome and Android and Microsoft PlayReader used by Microsoft Edge and Windows and some Android devices alongside Wildvine and Apple FairPlay used in Safari and everything else. That is really what um, Vivaldi is getting at is that those will probably be the gatekeepers locking you out of a Linux system and into one of the main um uh, players, or at least running a uh, a full fledged Google uh, Googleized Googley Googleized Chrome is probably what they're saying. So here is the uh, big response: Mozilla opposes the proposal because it contradicts our principles and vision for the web. Any browser, server, or publisher that implements common standards is automatically part of the web. Standards themselves aim to avoid the assumption about the underlying hardware or software that might restrict where it can be deployed. This means that no single party decides which form factors, devices, operating systems, and browsers may access the web. While it gives people more choices, thus more avenues to overcome personal obstacles to access. Choices in assistance of technology, location, form factor, and price combined with thoughtful design of the standards themselves all permit wildly diverse groups of people to reach the same web. Now, one of those things we will mention here is the accessibility choices. This is what is behind the fight at Reddit right now, which we have not covered on this channel. I've been watching it, but I haven't. There's been too many other things to consider in the news, and the bulk of this happened when I was away for a couple of weeks at conferences at camps. The overall, there there are third-party tools that make Reddit accessible because the current versions of Reddit do not have ADA accessibility. And by law, they don't specifically have to because there's no physical place to go and access Reddit. But there are third-party tools that require APIs in order to work, which make ADA-compliant Reddit tools available. And the problem we have here is that Reddit now wants to charge a ton of money for those, meaning that those very small operations are going to have no choice but to close down. And so that really is what's getting behind a lot of the issues here. And so uh, Firefox is taking this solid stance against it. Mechanisms that restrict these choices are harmful to the openness of the web. Um, but of course, we can carry that further and look at the requirement to use Cloudflare on a website. Uh, we can look at um, uh, we can look at the the being forced to run 2FA. I don't know. Of course, those are good security implementations. We can argue. I'm not going to push back against those too much because we do have to have a level of security. But this is a level of security that actually adds gatekeepers. Now, again, though, going back to that two-factor authentication or or MFA, multi-factor authentication. If you're forcing me to use a phone number in conjunction with your site, you're already violating this. And so that is certainly an interesting discussion we can have alongside the web response DRM. And so um, basically their, their case says, no, this is a bunch of hot garbage. We should not be implementing this. Now, CEO of Brave had a more aggressive stance when a Twitter or is this X? What is this? Uh, when a weird user... I don't know, user of X? Sounds like a porn or something. I don't know. Um, but uh, they presume that Brave was just a reskin of Chrome who would follow suit. He made it pretty clear that they will not be providing support for WEI uh, like the various elements of Chromium they choose not to ship. What is he talking about? Well, these over here, again, from, uh, from Brave's GitHub account is going to show the various features they completely disable and the other proxies that Brave uses. Leading me, again, Brave Browser is good. I have some questions and I always have had some questions about the company itself, but the product they ship is good. Uh, at this point in time, 
I'm going to, if I have to place my stock in some browsers, um, Brave and Firefox are both good, all, despite the organizations and companies behind them uh, have left a lot to be desired. Nevertheless, they are good technologies. And here is what Chrome, uh, Chrome um, Brave leaves out from the Chromium repository. So they, and up here they explain what they're doing. They're capturing the source for Chromium. They're capturing the source for Brave. They're running the various hooks. The hooks are going to remove things. They're going to alter things. They're going to edit things. So what are they doing? You can read through this list. It's linked in the article, which will be in there. Uh, in the description here. Basically, anything connecting directly to Google is removed. So um, Google account integration is disabled. All the features that send data to Google are disabled. DNS prefetching is disabled. Chrome Google URL tracker is disabled. Uh, domain service reliability is disabled. Inline extensions. Um, so there's a number of different things uh, going on over there. Uh, so you can see dl.google.com repository from the Linux package. Uh, so that's removed. And there's just a number of other little things that they have that they remove. Now, they also run things through web proxies. So this is going to anonymize you as data does go back. Safe browsing requests, geolocation, plugin updates are proxied, certificate revocations, uh, all these types of things. And then there's some proxied endpoints, which you'll see are going to uh, things like the Google servers, which are needed for the implementation of the, the code on the browser itself. Those are proxied out. So Brave is doing a good job here, and they're giving us the details of what they're doing. And you'll notice these are links. Every one of these goes to a separate page describing exactly what they're doing and why. And so uh, with this, you can flip over here and you can see that what they're doing, things they should disable, and then uh, that's kind of what we are getting. They do have a point at the very bottom to talk about what's the difference between Brave and Googled Chromium, and they have a description of that and a few other things going on on that page there as well. And so that is really what we have as far as um, what Brave's response is and what uh, Mozilla's response is. Of course, there's been some discussion over on um, the Hacker News, uh, which is basically just an, an article, pretty much the inevitable end game of the web, he says, in no small part, funded by the ad-based business models along the analog uh, gap, pretty much destroys most attempts to use this stuff to do copy protection and enabled by developers who have insisted we shove as much difficult to implement function, <laughs> talking about CSS complex stuff, not powerful but easy to use APIs, uh, into the browser as conceivable possible. They're talking, they have some references to Flock, uh, how the, they did the pushback, but what they're doing right now is effectively Flock. I mean, what they're trying to implement with GA4 is not fundamentally different from Flock. They just got a lot of feet, uh, pushback on that, so they took it out, pulled it down, waited six months, rebranded it, and pushed it back out and just didn't tell anybody. Uh, that's why the uh, uh, Google Analytics 4 came up upon everybody without them really knowing what's going on. And then, of course, there is Reddit, um, uh, which is more commenting on the Ars Technica article here, Google's Nightmare Web DNA, uh, Web and <laughs> API, <laughs> I used to tell I'm a biological scientist, right, uh, wants a DRM gatekeeper for the web. And then this guy here says, switch to Firefox. Your freedom may very well depend on it. The problem is, as we said earlier, if this is implemented and you switch to Firefox and Firefox ignores this, you won't be able to access those websites. And so it merits with it a deeper and a broader discussion than just switching your browser, um, especially since they're not implementing it. So it's something that we might have to take on a regulation level, which is a much more frightening place to go. And so uh, there's a lot of uh, things down here. Of course, we have some uh, wonderful comments over there. And uh, some people are mentioning that this is already merged into Chrome. Uh, so let's have a brief look at that. And uh, this was actually talked about being over there. Uh, ensure origin trial enables full feature. Um, yeah, there you go. So get some information over there. And so you can kind of see that there is certainly a discussion. We need to have a bigger one. But that is what we get. The other big players, competitors to Google, are giving us the information that we need to uh, ask more questions about what is going on with uh, web DRM. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. 
you can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.